Please, six o'clock. <laughs> like to review and approve the minutes on the January 9th. So moved. Any questions on the minutes? All in favor? Stay. I have to abstain. And Lynn does too. Lynn and Bill. Any public comment out there tonight? Any public out there? We got three ladies out there. They, they could say something if they want. Uh, student advisory council, I guess. Yeah, it's such a limited thing. I told that's you. all right. Yep. Good. Hey, right to unfinished business. Um, I think you've mentioned. I think you missed my financial <laughs> statements. Oh, jeez. Sorry, Patty. I mean, you, we can go right past it if you like. Sorry. Um, we have 31 warrants tonight to sign um, that were emailed to you for your review, totaling 1,602,965.41. Um, I did send you um, your February report, and we do have some new variances. Um, the, um, the correction was made um, that happened in the month prior of the salaries for the uh, school uh, educational nurse. Uh, and the curriculum development stipend is still showing negative, but we still have a positive uh, balance in the offset account. But we're, our tuition accounts are over budget by about 13342 And this is due to an unexpected increase in tuitions awarded to one of the uh, Chapter 766 schools. Uh, the OSD increased them um, because they had to move um, and their rent went up. So the tuition that we were paying $110,000 per student, we are now paying $116,000 a student. So we thought we had some potential state savings, but then when that came through, $116,000 $116, a year per child. Out of district and we have three four. students there. Three. We're going to be able to bring that program in house? Yeah. How many do we have there, Patrick? Three. We could possibly bring one back. We, we, it's a good question. We have a similar program in house, but those students were already enrolled in this program prior to the creation of that system. So there is talk, you know, we talk with the families and stuff, but it's got to be a full agreement to bring them back. So there's, there's attempts and we brought some back over the years, but. Is there transportation on top of that? Yes. Daily or weekly? Daily and two us Springfield, back and forth. question on the warrants that we signed tonight and we went through the financial statements that you mailed us, emailed us today are those figures reflected in, in those financial statements Can you repeat the what did i send you we, today? we did warrants right in the last yes. few days and then we got a copy of the financial statements in the, did i get an email on it today with the financial statements i i can't i don't remember I, this is the week from hell we do the budgets okay. and, and, and meetings, and I don't know when I emailed who to what, when to where. I think we got financial statements today. And I thought I did them yesterday. Was, yesterday. Yesterday. Was it yesterday? I didn't give it yesterday. But the question is, are the warrants reflected that we signed, right? And did you, we signed tonight. Yes. We mailed over the weekend. Have those figures been reflected in those financial statements? Here, yes, but if, when we do it at the elementary school, they appear the month following. Okay. So, so your January warrants are showing in the, the column that says range to date. So that would be what your so that was. So yeah. that money, if it's not in as an encumbrance, mm -hmm. uh, we can pretty much look at it uh, as uh, ours, and we're not committed on any of it specifically present for tuitions or anything like that. Well, when you say ours, I mean, some of it belongs to department heads who plan no, no, on spending I'm money it's, on their it's, departments. What I'm saying is we're not, it hasn't already been spent. Well, that's or not true, people we hired. don't have a purchase order system. So a lot of this money so can be spent. So the encumbrances aren't have, up to date, that's the, a question. The encumbrances are only for payroll. We do not have an encumbrance system for non-payroll items. You do for school bus transportation. 
I don't, I might put one in for that, and I put one in for the tuitions, but that's about it. They don't do them at the high school. They don't do them in the, in the well, I'm just trying to get schools. a handle on We do them in the main office for big things, the bus contract, the tuition, because it helps us track. Okay. So right now, we're not looking at a substantial uh, balance of the infantry. No, I'm looking at right now, um, we have budget savings of about six that I can that I can account for six thousand five hundred and eighty eight dollars. It's almost like nothing. Are we uh, content to stand pat or should we freeze or what should we do? Because we do not want so to I misunderstand what you're saying, but we have a lot of budget item lines that we won't know if we will spend out that the remainder is end up with ends up creating our E and D. Right. For example, you know, like I have, I have a bunch of budgets in my head that I could t know that there's remaining money right now as of February. You know what I mean? That you know, I know like the English department has you know seven hundred dollars left in their account, and there's you know there's all these different accounts with that kind of money in it. But those monies, if they're not spent at the end of the year, fall back into the main account. But they're still buying books and materials for second semester courses. So that's why I gave that one as an example. But there's other accounts that. We can't project out that we're going to have savings yet this early in the year. We don't know the snow plowing savings yet because the snow season isn't over yet. We don't know the energy savings yet. So to say there's only six thousand left over, there may be a hundred thousand dollars left over. Or in past practice, we've had several hundred thousand dollars left over. And our snow plow people are the slowest dealers. Right, and so and so the the idea of worrying about freezing and that kind of thing right now, I my guess would be it's a little premature. But I mean, I'd run Patty's idea, but I don't know what you're. Well, you got it chunk of money in there for uh, textbooks. I'm not sure what department it was. What, uh, $25,000, $30,000 for textbooks? Correct. We have a $35,000 account for textbooks total, yes. Yeah. For all, all departments. But it has a, it's still there as a Correct. statement I looked at. I believe. Well, not in total, no. Most of them, a substantial amount of it. I think you guys around $12,000 left there. Patty? Patty, when you got a minute? I was just trying to find the textbook line real fast from there's, uh, well, at, you might have made a purchase and it's not recorded yet. Uh, there's, you've got about 25 grand in there. So, prior to going to that, that could be something you are, you, in your head, you ordered it. We just don't have the bill yet. Right. No, I trained, yeah. Yeah. I spend more. So, can I, can I say something first? Yeah. Somebody brought up a good thing about not the purchase order system again. If we had the purchase order system, like you're saying, nothing's been encumbered yet because whatever textbooks. Would a purchase order system that we've been talking about for a few years help us in the <coughs> budget wise? It, not only will it help us with budget and knowing where we are, it is going to free up a lot of my time for all the manual calculations that I am doing every month. And, wh and why is it the principal's responsibility to run a purchase order system? at a particular school? I don't know why the module was never used when they bought the software. It, it, we, well, we've owned the software forever. I don't know why it was never implemented. Well, but now we were, were going, um, Scott Paul and I were going back between, because that we're going to go from a handful of users to many users, did we want to go to the cloud or did we want to buy a bigger server? So the cloud was going to be a recurring thirty thousand dollar a year, and I finally convinced them it's, it's not worth it. It's just it's just not worth it. It's, although they say the ease of using it is, I don't see the difference. It's a difference of adding a line in a different manner. So now they bought the new server, and it we're going to switch over the Friday of vacation. We'll be we will not have access. And then I have someone who has been training to train. So then we've got to get the staff to train. So at this point in the year, do we want to get them to, I want to get them trained so when they, they can at least start putting their purchase orders in for summer of FY19 would be the goal. Because I work in a company that purchases a lot of things and it's as simple as me going to a computer Picking Benjamin Moore paints Correct. gives me a purchase order. I fax it over. Everything you can track something by a purchase order number, and how you pay it is through a purchase order. If you don't have a purchase order, you don't get your money. 
And that's what's going to happen. To, and that, that's what's going to happen now. If I get a bill and there is no purchase order, that bill is going back to the person who should have cut the purchase order and say, "You pay the bill. You you ordered something without a purchase order." And this is next fiscal year. We'll do this. Uh, it, 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 I'm going to allow them to do it once they get trained. If they want to tr do it in eight, at the end of 18, they can. But they absolutely have to do it as of July 1st. Just for clarification for third parties watching this, we have a purchase order system that does track. It is just all done manually. manually it's not yes. done computerized. So I have to go to the person keeping the book who has to open up the book and tell me where the account stands before it gets to Patty. So it does exist. I just want to make sure there, there is a tracking system. We're not right. we're not 200 years ago, right? Okay, there, we, there are people with purchase orders and we're getting bills and it's kind of, you know, and we're connecting it too, but we do have to get up to date. We do have to get to eventually get to a software. Right. I agree to that. But, but I, I don't want everybody to think that it's like the Wild West out there. purchases orders are and then manually put them in the calculator to get a total. And I, I understand we have to go there. It's just the way it sounded like it was like, oh, we need, we need to get these things called a purchase order. Like, no, but, we have a full account of doing that. But there is, there are schools that wait <laughs> until the bill comes in and then they do the purchase order. That's right. Yeah, Frontier does not do it that way. You need a purchase order before you make it. My question to... was very similar yep. to yours, and it really, so it sounds like there's uh, some kind of a process that's underway uh, to make that happen, and I guess I would either make a motion or vote that we not freeze right now, but with some more information at the next meeting, because because that, that was we don't uh, have the to question. To not I know, <laughs> I know, there's not a, not a motion to not freeze. I was, wasn't sure how to say that. Thank you. Not take any there action was a, this Yeah, time. there was a question on whether we wanted to freeze. Yeah, I was just yeah. inquiring as yeah. to if Patty was comfortable where uh, we are. Yeah. Well, if you only got $6,500, it's, you know, Bill had something first. Um, I just wanted to ask you about a few other overages in the financial okay. statement. So okay. I'm still on purchase yeah. order. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's your purchase order? Uh, well, you just mentioned that we've been talking about this for a couple of years, and I sat in that chair for five years, and I don't remember talking about this. So when were we talking about this? I remember. When? I, I don't remember this being as big of a problem as, as it sounds like. So obviously what you're doing is working. It's just... You need to move forward. No, we've been, we've been talking about updating to going to, to getting the ability. But well, I don't remember it. Okay. What happens, Cindy, is uh, if we have a purchase order system, I'd be able to tell you earlier than mm -hmm. June. Oh, no, we I got $100,000 left I'm over, totally and now we have to hurry up and spend 100000 I just don't remember talking about it at school committee. Okay. And so that was my question. We didn't talk about it, but you said we did. I'll believe you. I hear a problem. Hold question. On. Hold on. Yes. Bill first. Is it about is it about purchase orders? Yeah. Okay. If if when the purchase orders are all implemented and what have you, and we get the warrants, are we going to be able to click on the item we want and see the backup as no, to what? No. Not the, until you give me a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> to buy a server that, that would have cool that out. much memory in it. I that thought I could you said, said you bought a you, you just bought we a bought server. We bought a thirty thousand dollar server. Oh, that would be cool. Why we would need a much larger server to scan invoices and all purchase orders into a system. But that would, down the road. <laughs> sure, that's a vision. That, that would, I mean, that hey, would people have been using the... computerized PO since the 18th century, and we're just getting there now. That's a hundred thousand dollar road. When are we going to take a trip down that one? We're not going down yet. <laughs> you bet you're going to check by the end of the week. Don't no, we've been talking <laughs> about scanning a long time. But what I'm trying to try to say is, is. With the storage and everything else, you really think it's going to cost a hundred thousand dollars to buy the storage you need? The, uh, yeah, I do. And then, and then I, and then we, it adds paper, it adds work to the people who are, are doing the work. So, uh, it, that adds hours. But the, but the, but the scanning purposes won't have the problem like we have at the Blue School right now. With boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of receipts and invoices and everything that we have to keep for so many years, if we scan these things, we wouldn't have that problem over there. And I know we've been talking about scanning for a while. I mean, I'm not, I know it's a hundred thousand dollars for per thing, but it's something that we're going to have to address. Just saying, we're just getting into the 21st yes. century now for purchase orders. Let's not. Let's, let's, let's get them used to that. Is this something about the purchase orders? Okay. I'm just wondering if the Fort Elementary schools do it by hand or if they're. Uh, by hand. 
to group ethnic. <laughs> Phil has a so question about overages. A couple of the other overages, a couple of seven thousand dollar ish overages. One was like a summer maintenance. One was a stipend. For so the summer maintenance one, it's just a matter of where she puts it. Um, it's really budgeted in. Um, it's budgeted in the custodial line, but for some reason she breaks it out, and I'm not going to tell her not to, or I can tell her not to, but she's going to do it anyway. So um, next year I'll just budget that money there instead of putting it in the custodial line. I can pull it out and, and put it in there. Um, so that's not going to be an overage in the end. That's gonna no. Be, okay. If you look at, you got to net everything. I always tell you, look yeah, at the, the total function code, and if we're the total function code, we're still positive. Don't worry. In the uh, <coughs> stipend for curriculum, something or other. That and that I, is the one I'm telling you. There, there's. There's an offset because Sarah has one account, and she. But if she pays stipends, it has to be broken out. But she doesn't know at the beginning of the year how much of it's going to be stipends and how much is material. So she's got two aligned. So she's negative seventy-eight ninety-four, but she's plus twenty-one eight ninety. So netted together, we're still positive. She's still within her budget, and that's what that that first note is. Well, she got a lot of money in professional development too. So and what was it? Oh, wrestling goes fifty percent over budget. Wrestling, uh, I don't know. I think I don't know why that is. I have I meant to uh, shoot Barney Sanderson a note. I don't know. Did they ha have to hire a new a, an extra coach? Well, we had we hired the assistant. The assistant we hired was the longtime head coach for the last twenty something years. Mr. Gordon came back to help out with the team, oh. so it was budgeted for. It's budgeted for coach. a year, first year kind of thing, and he comes in on step three, you know, um, with his all his, you know, all his experience. So then he's a very expensive head coach. It's a very expensive assistant coach. Well, they're having a good year, so. Yes, they are. They, they made it to the finals, and they'll be going. They're leaving Friday, and um, they're going to Wakefield, and they'll be uh, in their tournament on Saturday. Oh, and then um, school committee stuff. That, are we over on school committee conference? What was? It? Yeah, a lot of people went to the conference this year, but we're again. You're still you, eight thousand six eighty one. So I'm not concerned. You still had sixty. You have to look. Sixty seven hundred dollars in supplies and materials, and twenty five hundred. So you just don't use those supplies. And you're brown bagging it next year. Dick. So you have, actually what you did is they, they put those expenses in a separate line <coughs> with no money budgeted to begin right. with. So that's why it's into the negative. See, I I can budget things and I budget I, I budget things where they used to charge them. Now they're getting smarter. Now I budget there, and now they're using the correct account. So you know, it's a constant challenge. <laughs> Keith, you have one more? I just had two. Yeah, there was uh, instructional software like eight thousand over, and then a retirement. The instructional software, we had talked about that. That was on a meeting note. Um, once we went to the one-to-one -one devices in seventh grade, the teachers wanted the Go Guardian so they could monitor. So we used some um, payroll savings. So we were, we're going to be over in um, the science salaries, and we used the uh, 5000 6000 to buy the Go Guardian software. And this, yeah, this is where it gets, it gets a little bit... Yeah. But I can't we, we had this many people watching it, this. right? That's pretty good. And then we took five thousand out of textbooks to get back into the technology fund to buy to fix some projectors that were in the building because the GoGuardian software was being used like textbooks, you know, because it allows you to read, it allows you to focus. And wow. can't remember that presentation allows the teacher to to lock the screens of all the computers in the room to read just the article that's in front of them, yep. that kind of stuff. So, do you have anything else, sir? There was just a a, <coughs> a retirement. Overage. Oh, right. I explained that before too. Um, what happened with that was that we used to charge uh, some of the grants <clears throat> a piece of that, but we're not allowed to do that anymore. The federal rates changed, so we we have to pay for all of it. Thank you. And that is a. The twenty five thousand this year. The, the budget coming up, it's gone up another forty thousand dollars. Does anybody have anything else for Patty on the financial statement and warrants? 
That's all, Patty. We're going to let you keep on going. Thank you. Talk to us about this nice budget that oh, I you and your subcommittee talk. came up with. I'm choking, so. So, we're, um, I'll let Lynn start. Okay. Yeah, I'll just start. Well, uh, we're talking about on um, page one of 54 is the superintendent's message. And at the bottom paragraph, you'll see the Hampshire County Trust, Insurance Trust. Um, there's, a, there's a very simple explanation for the uh, stakeholders, the taxpayers, the people in the towns to understand that um, the reserves have dwindled and we, uh, and I put in a little bit of data to, to show uh, where and how the reserves have dwindled. And so for FY19, the uh, Hampshire County Insurance Trust has proposed an increase insurance uh, co-pays in order to keep the premiums down. And this requires us at Frontier Regional District uh, and the towns of Union 38 schools to adopt uh, Mass General Law Chapter 21B, Sections 21 and 23, which we did in June, and enter into negotiations with the teachers union to negotiate a settlement regarding the planned savings. So the Patty is right now in the process of sending letters around and putting together a committee. Uh, there needs to be a retired person on the committee and um, the teachers union and um, I don't know who else. Uh, I have will, a couple they will, state board of retirees. Yeah. So they will um, decide how that extra money, 25% of the savings, will be disseminated to all the participants in the health insurance program. Um, this uh, increased uh, co-pays are approximately 4.7 for HMO and 3.3 for PPO. And my understanding is that had we not gone this way, had um, this not become a solution, the premiums would have gone up quite significantly. Double digits, 10, 10 to 11 percent. So it behooves us. And so that's, that's a very basic explanation. If you move over to, um, I was going to say channel. If you move over to page 4 of 54, you're going to see some um, pie charts that really uh, pulls out the different numbers from the different accounts and the different areas where our budget is. And uh, when we look at our FMI 19 proposed budget, you'll see uh, instruction is about 49% of all the money we spend. 49% of everything in this is, is <coughs> pure instruction. You'll see other student services, and that's transportation, health services, uh, things like that, that's 8%. The administration, that is the building administration as well as the central office portion of what you pay for uh, the, the business offices, the finance, the financial people, the bookkeepers, and the superintendent's office. Tuition to other districts is 7% of what our budget is. Employee benefits, 20% is uh, uh, part of our budget, the whole budget. And then building and facilities takes up 9%. If you look down below, you'll see our FY19 revenue sources. You'll see that the town assessments um, are 70%. So the town, um, the four towns come together <coughs> and they provide us with 70% of the funding. Our chapter 78 that goes into the towns or comes into us is 24%. That's our state funding. Our SPED grant is 0.9%. Our Title I is 0.4%. Our Circuit Breaker is 1.8%. Our SPED Revolving is 1%. And School Choice provides us with 2% of our overall revenue. If you turn the page, you're going to see it broken down even further by areas of spending which correlate with the with the actual item numbers so the 1000s are our administration seven percent of the budget is put aside for administration 42 percent of that seven <coughs> percent is building based leadership and clerical services so that's everyone that works in the main office and uh, as well as the principal and the assistant principal uh, Three percent is the school committee and legal services. So what we pay our legal, um, our attorney for their advice and uh, their coverage, plus whatever money we spend for the school committee when they go on 
when they go to the MASC, MASS, and uh, other spending. The superintendent business and finance offices is 42% of 7% of the budget. And then our information uh, management and technology office, which is district-wide, your piece, Frontier Regional's piece is 13% of 7%. When we look down further at buildings and facilities, that com compromises or comprises 9% of the budget. So when you look at the maintenance of the buildings, grounds, and equipment, that's 22% of 9%. Custodian services is 37%. Network and communications is 5%. And then our heating and utilities is 36% of that portion of the budget. So when we get to instruction, that's 49% of what we spend of the entire budget. And you can look at, um, on the left side, teachers and department heads, that comes to 70% of what the instruction goes for, as it should. Uh, then you can see other areas, medical and therapeutic services, 4%. Those are our OT, PT, speech, um, counseling, well, not counseling, but um, OT, the LPN. Yes, the LPN, I'm sorry, the LPNs that take care of our uh, life skills students. Uh, that's 4%. Guidance and psychological services, psychologist services, that's 8% of what goes into our instructional area of the budget. And our instructional assistants are only 10% of what goes into the budget, the instruction area of the budget. Supplies, materials, and technology, 5%. And then curriculum director and SPED director, that's 3% of the overall instruction area of the budget. When we go further down, we're looking at other student services, and that's 8% of the budget. Health services at 14%, those are our nurses and our nurse supplies and that kind of health care. Transportation is 51%. Food services is 2%. Athletics and student activities is 33% of that portion of the budget of 8%. Then we have some additional costs, and Patty was alluding to this earlier. Uh, tuition to other districts is 26% of that portion of the budget. And then employee retirement and insurance benefits at 74% of that piece of the budget. And that has, is quite significant. So, And that's the budget broken down into areas um, that correspond with the numbers, the uh, line items and the numbers. And it includes all our areas of revenue, what is on the general uh, budget, which uh, we asked the town for, but it also includes money that we spend using school choice, SPED uh, revolving, SPED grant, and our other sources of funding. So what we're presenting is, um, I'm going to let Patty do the, this uh, narrative. Uh, she can speak to it more closely. So, but it's a 3.9 overall. Oh, 3.09. Oh, oh, I do that every time. 3.09 in, uh, increase over last year's requested budget, or used budget, actual budget. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna let you read the um, narrative and I'm gonna walk you through starting on page 11 of 54, which is our student and staff data sheet. And um, on the left-hand side, um, is the number of students we had at October 1st. Um, and we freeze it there because that's what our funding is based on. So on October 1st, we had 623 students, 121 of them were special ed. And they uh, that 121 is within that 623. Um, projected enrollment, I am keeping current with, um, with, the, with the changes in the um, the monthly uh, enrollments. Uh, grade seven, that's me taking every sixth grader in the four elementaries um, and Darius can explain to you why it's probably not going to be 125 if you want to take that piece for me what happens yeah, I, mean, I think you've heard me say this a couple of times that's the total number of students that are in the current sixth grade we are going to lose some going back to their either their home school their choice students 
this is when some families will choose private school and I would dread to believe but they may also charge they may also choose a charter school. So it's we lose about 20 students per year. And so how many do we lose uh, on average to don't do we lose uh, some children at this stage too to the vocational? Not, not in that line. So the other line you look at is the ninth the next grade ninth year ninth grade class you probably could estimate they were going to lose between 10 and 15 students to the um, to tech. Again, it, it ranges, but somewhere in the low teens is the, is the number they usually take. So we're looking at it says 663, but it, it's not going to we're not going to see that. Uh, on the right is our staff, um, and these are changes that um, we made in staffing during the year. Um, so when you see that we're down one English teacher, we had a retirement, and what uh, Darius did was he took, instead of hiring an English teacher, he hired someone else and parsed them out between, I believe, social studies, industrial arts, and academic support services. Um, so right now we're down 1.1 in totality and that is because we are down one IA who was with a student who is no longer with us uh, and then our occupational therapy dropped a point uh, one. We were last year at point three services and this year we only needed point two. So that is the changes and then down the bottom we um, those are the columns in our collective bargaining agreement. And I've listed for you um, how many teachers are in bachelor's, how many are at master's, how many are master's plus 30, and how many are master's 45 or CAGS. The next page, 12 of 54, this is going to take us from where we are right now, FY18, 10,716,945. We had to do the collective bargaining steps and that added $56,956. The 2.5% increase was $106,650. We have new longevity payments of $10,500. There's an allowance for non-union salary raises of $16,135. We had to bring on to the um, appropriated budget uh, $65,622 from school choice. And we'll talk about that when we get to school choice. Our coaching stipends have had a small increase of about 3,156. Uh, mentor stipends, 3,550. This isn't a new item. It's just one that never gets budgeted. So we're, we're going to budget it and I'm, we're going to know where to put it. Um, we don't have any announced retirements for buyback. So we are decreasing 37,978. And we also had a, a savings of 56,536 back in the budget between the uh, what we had budgeted for FY18 hires and what Darius had hired them at. Um, now we also have to add, looking at it, we're, uh, we're continually under budget in our gas expense, so we're going to raise that by 400. Unemployment tax is going to go up 806, and that's based on our salaries increasing. Health insurance waivers, we have one new person who is waiving the insurance and they get, if they do not take our, if a teacher does not take our insurance, they get $1,000. Our custodial supplies are always running over, so we'd like to add 2000 there. Regional transportation is going to go up 5114 and that is a 1.83% increase, which is in the contract based on a consumer price index. Um, and just so you're all aware, FY19 is the fifth year of our five-year contract with um, Gripco. So we will be looking, we'll be going out to bid um, ne next year for a new contract. Our Medicare tax will go up 11095 because of our uh, wages. Central office expense uh, is up 15391 um, And that is a combination of the percent, uh, Frontier's percent going up but also that we added the food service director and the health insurance costs for the central office people. Um, the town of Deerfield is net Deerfield, like Seinfeld. Deerfield is going to be uh, charging us uh, sewer fees. I don't know why they never did before, but they're starting to now. So we have to add 18,850. The student technology device is 25,000. This is um, the, the um, we need this money to continue the one-to-one -one device program for our students and it's what Scott Paul, our technology director, feels we need every year to replace outdated, you know, they Chromebooks, they really uh, 
They don't take new software more quickly than, than a laptop will. They, they age out, so, and this will replace one grade, at least one grade every year and continue our program so that we are all seven through 12 on one-to-one -one devices. The Franklin County Retirement Assessment went up $45,128. And if Mr. in the Mr. Kowacki's words, it's because people are living longer. Um, health insurance is up 109364 So we also had some small operational decreases. Our life insurance, we can, we can reduce by 970 Our copier costs are going down 1373 our monitor stipends down three thousand. Uh, total technology costs, based on the allocations um, by student, are going to go down three thousand four eighty one. Our other insurances, and when I say other, I mean our non-employee insurances. Um, we're going to have a savings of about eleven thousand, and that is because our five-year workers' comp. We finally got rid of our high years so we've got five low years right now so our workers comp is, is really saving us some money um we were carrying an extra eleven thousand five fifty five in uh the professional services line so we can reduce that um and our sped director feels that we can reduce our sped summer services by fifteen thousand six eighty eight and our sped tuitions by twenty three thousand five ninety for a total decrease of seventy thousand six ninety four but the net change is an increase of 331,509 or 3.09%. And it brings our total to 11,048,454. So on the, on the next pages, pages 13, through I think page yeah, to 24 is the actual breakdown of each account you'll see what we spent actually in, in fy 17 fy 18 budget and what we're proposing for F the fy 19 and this is exactly what your monthly report is so this is what desi requires and if you look it, it pretty much lines up very easily with our our software um, with the accounts we have in our software i just don't put the account numbers on there because then i'd have to make everything so squishy you wouldn't be able to see it so you can look at that at your leisure. Um, starting on page 25, we're showing you all our other sources of funding and how they're spent. Um, so there's nothing on 25. On page 26, uh, the SPED grant pays $41,991 for a, um, a, the SPED secretary. Uh, on the next page, you'll see the school choice is paying for some teachers, circuit breakers paying for some teachers, SPED revolving is paying for teachers, Title I is paying for teachers. So when we look at um, just the one budget, it looks like our teaching is 2.9 million when really it's 3.1. So this gives you a broader view of what we're really spending on all, our, uh, all of our teachers. Um, our specialist circuit breaker is adding to that. Um, on the next page, you'll also see we use a lot of our, our money for um, uh, an educational support nurse and also a lot of our instructional assistance in these special revenue funds. And so if you go through to page, thank you, or 36, you'll see that the 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 percentages of what we're using so 93.99 percent of our budget is coming from um, the general fund school choice is providing 1.95 percent circuit breaker 1.82 sped revolving 1.02 the sped grant 0.86 and the title 1.36 so when we add up all our funds, we would be spending eleven million seven fifty four four oh four in FY nineteen. Um, the next page is our uh, analysis. Yeah. So is um, is the increase in Franklin County retirement assessment is that reflected in that page thirty six insurance stuff? <coughs> Thank you. 
Uh, it would no. It's going to be. You want to know where the line item is, Phil? Well, I, I mean, I guess I'm. I'm trying to get my my uh, head around that still. The forty-five thousand dollar increase on the theory that people are living longer, which of course is contrary to fact. We are the, the only country, major country, that has a decreasing lifespan. The past two years, American lifespan has decreased because so many people are dying of untreated illness because we don't have health insurance for everybody. Well, I'll forward you his analysis. But it's going to be rolled into, on um, page 24, insurance for active employees, the 5200. I believe it's rolled into there. Actually, I'm wrong. Go to page 23 of 54, em employer retirement contributions, function code 5100. Our budget was for FY18 was 358.032. Our assessment is 403160 and the change is 45128 And that's if we pay it in full in July, which we normally do. We get a, a we'll save about $7,000 by paying it early instead of in two pieces. So that $7,000 comes out of the forty five. We can subtract I don't, it from the forty five. No, I don't co include it. it would, I would add 7000 if we weren't going to pay it at the, all at once. Oh, okay. So this is the number. The, this is the reduced. To. Okay, thanks. Yeah. The stuff that kills our budget. Hmm? That's the stuff that kills our budget. Those twelve percent increases. Frankly, just be happy that most of our our, our employees are MTRS. <laughs> so on page thirty-seven, this is um, this is our projection based on the governor's budget of our choice and charter. Um, in, for this year, we projected that the choice tuition and revenue would be one million one sixty five forty. Preliminarily, it's an increase to one point two um, or fifty four thousand five hundred and forty four. Our start, our state charter aid went up by fifty thousand one ninety one. And but on the flip side of that, our outgoing school choice increased seventy nine thousand eight eighty nine, and our charter went up 206817 so we thought we were going to have $199,151 um, net but we're going to have 17180 and then the projection for the 19 budget they're saying we're going to be upside down again and they had predicted this in 17 that we were going to have we assessed 65,000 but we ended up getting in about $300,000 and we saved that money we did not spend that money. We're spending some of it this year. So, but once again, um, our beginning balance, if you look below, is 466,843. They had projected that we were going to owe 65,000. We're going to use in 18, 142,000, giving us a balance of 324. I'm going to add that 17,000. So, what we have available for FY19 is 341,890. And we'll have budgeted salaries and the $35,000 shortfall of 264897 which will leave us a little bit of a cushion of about $59,813. Um, so, Mr. Decker, I know you've been concerned about, you know, um, deficits um, for the lunch program. This could be one place that we go and have a little cushion left here. It could be enough. Uh, yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, yes, I do. But I, I, you know, I, I don't know that this is going to be true. It, it didn't turn out to be true in 17, and I don't, and I don't know that it will be true in 19. But we have to budget to the number. Uh, the next page is the circuit breaker, and this is getting significantly lower because we are losing a lot of our students. They're aging out, our, um, that we're paying high sped costs for. So. But the problem is the new programs that we've developed to keep our kids in-house are paid from these salaries. So next year, this, this swing of um, expenditures is going to have to come onto our budget because we want to maintain the, these programs in-house and not send our kids out into special ed programs. But we're going to need to find a new source of revenue because this is, is drying up. Not, not only is it twofold because not only are we are are we earning less because we don't have our as high cost 
but also the state has been decreasing the amount that they've been reimbursing. So they used to give us close to 72, I think they're around 65 now, so it's like a double whammy because it's in the it's the legislative process that sets the rate of, of reimbursement. And it doesn't start until it's 30,000 or so per kid, right? Uh, more than that. I think it's like around 38 something now. It could be up, even up to 42 now. There's the possibility that the fees that we talked about could be going to the tune of $115,000. No, these, 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 these are for the teachers who are keeping more kids going out to the $115,000. Right, but if we, if we lose these kids, that's where they're going to be Correct. Going. So either way, our budget's going to go up because we're either, if we can't, if we can't sustain them here, if we, we can't find the money, then we're going to have to find the money for tuition. So next year, it's going to be tough. Um, the next page is the excess and deficiency. It was certified by DOR on the 8th of January at 352567 Um you heard Mr. Scanlon talk about correcting um, of an insurance withholding, which we're estimating to be about 60000 And the finance subcommittee voted to use, again, as they did last year, half of the remainder to apply to the assessments. So our available excess and deficiency funds are 146283 So on the next page, this is our, uh, our analysis of our school choice receiving. So our final 17 numbers were we had 163 kids and they stayed, they didn't all stay all year. So the FTE was 149.66. We received $493,254 in SPED increment and tuition of 738300 for a total of $1,231,554. And if you look in the column that says FY17 going down, that's where they were coming from. Um, the bulk of them, as you can see, uh, is from Greenfield, 64.01, and then Montague, uh, 14, was the next highest one. What we reported in October is 160 kids, um, and a spend increment of 420.085, tuition of 795 for 1,215. And again, if you look um, in that FY18 column, the majority comes from Greenfield with 66 kids and Montague again with 30 kids. Can I ask you a dumb question? Sure. Why are, why are Montague and Turner's Falls called out differently? They only have one school. Um, I, I Montague and who? Turner's Falls. Well, that's probably why it says zero. It, it depends on how the state re reports it. Sometimes they it, it's one di they report it as Gill Montague, and then other times they report Gill and then Montague. So this, this twelve sixty seven of Turner's Falls should or, probably come up to Montague. Or is this the town that they come from, or the school that they come from? The, it's the sending district. It's supposed to be yeah. the sending district. Well, there's only Gill Montague. Turner's Falls High School. There's only one. If so we should probably add them all together and I don't know I just I didn't know if they were if that was the towns they were coming from because there's the town of Montague the village of Turner's Falls the village of Lake Pleasant they got all the little villages within that right so you were wondering if it was so I just didn't know sending town. what was who they were sending yeah. part of the Right. Yeah, but they're also saying that in 17 they had 12.67 kids and Montague had 14 but now it's up to 30 with nothing down at Turner's Falls so right Probably a lot of those kids. Yeah, but I bet you but, but, part of that number was coming from Turner's. Page. It's probably me because I, in 17, I probably looked at the town they were from, and then in 18, I took their school sending well, district. Because the elementaries would show the numbers, and that's the elementary school yeah. they came from. So right. once right. they go from elementary to seventh grade, then all this, it all gets condensed right. into right. that year. There's a lot so of money. On what I know in Waitley, right. we have a lot of Kids from Montague and Waitley, so. Well, you break them down for the Mohawk kids. You break them down to Ashfield, Buckland, Shelburne, Shelburne Falls. So, so, what would your pleasure be by town? Or I'm, by I'm not trying to cause trouble. I just, I'm just asking. I don't want to make more by town though. the way you're doing it now. Okay. All right, and then um, the next page is their grades that they're coming from. How can you have 30 students and then 21 with no variance? 
Um, because something seems to be wrong in that box. And what I normally do, um, though, Cindy, is I look at, I compare the left hand grade seven. That that this is what mm -hmm. happens to, to the right hand grade eight to see if we lost any. Oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. So thirty to thirty is zero. Twenty eight to eight to twenty three is minus five. It. So I'm yeah. kind of diagonal. So it's a diagonal. It's a diagonal yeah. map. Mm -hmm. On the next page, it's our sending report. So in June, um, there was four, a total of 43 kids who were out for 40.62. Uh, we paid 29,602 in SPED increment and uh, 204,725 in tuition for 234,327. Preliminarily in June, we're down 142 uh, with a SPED increment estimate of 103,464. And tuition of 208250 for a total of 311714 and again uh, down below is where they're going um, and the majority of them seem to be going to Hatfield and Northampton and again the grade the next page 43 is the grades that they're in Page 44 is our charter, and in the end of June, there were 46 students uh, that stayed out 42.98 FTEs. We paid $750,048 in charter tuition, 38324 in facility fees for a total of 788372 And if you look at the preliminary 18, it's jumping six kids uh, to up to 52 students. And the charter tuition is 928 447 and the facility fee is 46178 for a total of 974625 And the facility fees? Uh, they, they get charged, uh, you pay a tuition and the facility fee. That's in like a chemistry class or something? For I, fees no, like I think that? it's for their building. Their, for Are they their, all brand new buildings? So the fee doesn't take care of any of the maintenance or facilities things? Correct. Pays the outstanding arrest warrants for their principals. Right. Oh. Administrative costs. <laughs> so, a, a, as you can see, um, the, the two schools that we they primarily are attending are Four Rivers and the PVPA. And down below is the uh, grades. That's scary. That that number is grade seven. 15 and 11 that's where it's the cheapest when they get up to be 12 that, that's where it's going to cost us a lot a lot more money when they get up to 10 11 and 12th grade because all those increments go up the state pays less to us <coughs> until it gets up to I'm not sure when when it stops and we pay for everything after year five is it you after no, year I five year three or three yeah I think it's three year phase out. <laughs> a lot of money so the next page is what I call Bob Decker's favorite page. And what I do is I break out the charter and choice out by town, um, both the number of students and the number um, and the actual tuition that's paid. And if you look on the, on the right hand um, chart at the bottom, you'll see that the Conway, um, their choice in charter is 301850 yet per our agreement, they only pay $204,013. So they make out 97836 Deerfield sends out $511,078 worth of kids, yet they're paying out 624003 So they're over-assessed 112000 uh, Sunderland, the same thing. They send out about 240, but they pay 305. And Waitley sends out 233 and pays only 153, so they 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 get a, a discount of about eighty thousand dollars. But this is something that occurred after the um, regional agreement was uh, developed, and it's, we've never gone back and um, and 
So just do four ish. So Conway Place ninety seven thousand dollars less than, than they, technically they should. Correct. If if, if 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 we did if we if these were assessed by <laughs> by town if, if each town paid for their own children yeah. going to cho choice we're just in agreement <laughs> yes but five years ago I know this it is wasn't a good thing now, these weren't like this five I years know. ago our little town paid for a lot of extra years there a lot well, Conway gets hammered too well, what, we all get hammered what, what, is, what it basically is is the kids that are going charter. There's no formula for them. I mean, we pay them. The district pays for any kid who wants to go to charter, and and it's the the regular regular kids that go to school. It's that formula that picks up all the costs. So you know the October one split, and that's why it, it's disproportionate. The disproportionate number of kids go from Conway and Waitley to charter schools compared to the Sunderland and Deerfield. So now we're going to get into the assessment part of the budget starting on page 47 and this is the uh, calculation of the five-year enrollment so we add in the year 2017 and we drop out 2012 uh, so we're Conway's down four children Deerfield's um, I mean Conway's up four children Deerfield's down 12 Sunderland's down eight Waitley's down 15 so it was a total change of uh, 31 less uh, children uh, than we had from 2012 to 2017. So how that affects the assessment, um, Conway is going to go from 15.86 up to 16.22. Um, there's going to be a small adjustment to Deerfield, 48.57 to 48.64. Uh, a small decrease for Sunderland of 23.73 to 23.70. And Waitley will go from 1184 down to 1144. Um, this next page is showing um, the revenue analysis. So the assessments to the town is going to increase $349,615. The Chapter 70 or it increased $11,100, which was $20 per student. Uh, the regional transportation, uh, the excess and deficiency is going to decrease 10,766. Uh, the regional transportation will hope will increase 30,691. Um, and this year there is no money coming out of the revolving transportation fund because we did, we did not get as much as we thought in 17 as we would. We actually got less. Uh, below is what the state right now is setting at the as the minimum contributions for each town and each town you can see with, besides Waitley has in, their minimum contribution has increased um, and page 49 is the the page from the state which shows uh, we've had a difference of enrollment of four or up four kids and the, that's how they calculate um, so Conway is still is 97, Deerfield is um, up six, Sunderland is the same, and Waitley is down two to the foundation enrollment in those towns. Page 50 is the um, assessment analysis. So um, right now for the operating assessment, um, and the transportation, the combined assessment, Conway's assessment will go up $92,210 or 7.23%. Deerfield's increase is $196,503 or 5.39%. Sunderland's will increase $65,452 or 3.78%. And Waitley's will actually go down $924,4549 um, or 0.49%. Um, page 51 is the actual calculation. We take the um, budget less the um, transportation. We apply the Chapter 70 aid. We apply the free cash, um, and that leaves 7,786,749. We take the minimum contributions that we saw and deduct them, and that leaves 2,914,407 
to be divided by the percentages that we saw on that first page and that is how the assessments are, um, are, are computed um, per ed reform. Um, we still compare it to the regional agreement and so if we were, went strictly by the regional agreement um, there's a difference for uh, Conway and uh, Waitley to their benefit and Deerfield and Sunderland not to their benefit. So we're, when we're looking at our numbers, it's always two to two. <laughs> so um, if we tried to do anything with our regional agreement, it probably wouldn't go anywhere because two would vote yes and two would vote no. <laughs> um, the next page is the transportation assessment. Um, the estimated, um, the re if we if you look just down below, um, the regional transportation per the cherry sheet is estimating 156,818. Um, I tried to be a little bit more conservative of that. I look at our FY17 regional transportation costs per the end of year report um, was two $230,614 and I take 60% of that. So I'm estimating that it'll be more in the neighborhood of 138,368. So the total transportation is 283 and less the 138, 368 that I'm estimating would be our uh, reimbursement means the towns will be assessed 144, 708. And you can see there is no credit there um, because again, we got less than 17 than we had anticipated. Page 53 is just a balancing of the budget uh, 18 and 19 to um, the funding sources um, and the changes to the assessments in the towns and the chapter 70 funds and excess and deficiency. So you can see we'll have a balance of 11,048,454 and we'll have funding coming in of 11,048,454. And the last page is just our allocation page um, that you see every year with the number of students and how much each has changed. Um, for the uh, regional assessment, for the Union 38 costs, and the superintendent office costs. Okay, so good job. Thanks, Patty. This one was, um, I don't know how to, the only way I could describe it is that it, the more we talked about the budget, the more we see, could see things that you don't like to see happen. Circuit breaker fund is, dry, is drying up because we're taking care of more students in house so you don't get the money from them. School choice is upside down. There are a bunch of lights in the end of the tunnel that the train is coming this way. So that's why nobody was happy, trust me, the subcommittee at 3.09% because we know that three, at least three of the towns are not going to be pleased with 3.09. But I use the term. This is the year where you've got to draw a line in the sand and say, you've got to take the 309 and run with it. Run it up the pole and see if anybody salutes, as they say. Because you can't keep, there's too many bad things looming that are going to affect next year and the year after that in a bad way. So if we affect this year in a bad way, 3.09 is not, not terrible. And we, you know, Waitley, Waitley will be okay, and, and the other three towns are going to have to. <laughs> but they have an elementary, you know, they have an, they all have elementary increases to deal with, too. So you put all the pieces <coughs> together. But we really, we really thought with, uh, with what's in here, there's no wiggle room in here. It's people from here. It's very simple. There, it gave us a very simple explanation of it's it's people after this. If you want to make the 309 become a 209 or a 1.5, it's people because there's no other. There's no other place. There's no place to go. <coughs> so we decided to go with 309. Bob, I just want to point out one thing. Patty mentioned that we never got billed for the sewer charges before. We've been billed for the sewer charges, but they were much more modest. Uh, I think we paid about thirty-five hundred or four thousand dollars a year or so ago, and now the rate is ten dollars a thousand gallons every six months on the water that's used, that we use for showers, et cetera. They did adjust the bill, but it's going to get worse because there's going to be millions of dollars that have to be spent on the sewer plants. And it, it's, 
it's earth shattering what it's costing the elderly people now. And anybody that uses any water, it's all on the rate there. Before you had some industrial uses who were picking up a big part of the tap, and not doing it anymore. Is that number going to change if we put another meter that goes out to that irrigation? Is what, that is what we are estimating it'll be with the irrigation meter. Okay, yeah. But this but the thing is years ago you had different plastics used an awful lot of water. Your saw Rand used a lot of water, and, and Pickle Shop used a lot of water, and you know those customers were all gone, and uh, so it's all being put on the uh, residents, basically. A lot of money. And Bob, I don't want to contradict you, but I don't even have a water and sewer line. I'm going to tell you. So I, I don't think we've ever paid a, a sewer bill. Patty, I'm going to tell you. No, okay, I'm sorry, in, in Four, infamous, $14,000, you're, you are correct. Yeah, because the infamous former administrative assistant of the town of Deerfield made a comment at a public meeting that we didn't pay anything. And I know I had signed a warrant the week before we reviewed it. And I went up and got a copy of it, brought it down to him, handed it to him, and said, this is what was paid. So don't ever say we never paid anything. Right. We did pay something. Well, he was trying to harp that he's no longer there. But it was harping that we never paid any sewer charges and we had to. We paid three thousand dollars so far this year and and we have a new bill. And the bill is it was eighteen thousand five to cut it in half, right? Mm -hmm. Roughly. For this year. For this year, yeah. Current for year, half yeah. the year. Yeah, for a half year. Now I've already heard the argument that the regional agreement doesn't allow the town of Deerfield to just assess charges anymore. That that's that, that that the police department charged last year, that discharge sewer thing, that that's against the regional agreement, which limits whatever. But well, you, you know, a good lawyer that wants to take it. No, I mean, you know, it's I I, I, I sympathize. Like I, I think it's, but but if, if if that number gets crazy, um, like you're saying, it's gonna. Um, it's getting crazier, and it, and they're going to they're talking about establishing an institutional rate too, which we would qualify for, but the institutional rate. Probably be higher than the residential rate. So yeah. we'll have to buy we could put a hundred thousand dollars worth of new toilets that only flush a, a third of a gallon or something like that. Or we rent some out of it. Why don't we just all that isn't where your so trouble that isn't where your trouble is in this budget. No, no, that is it's no. not in the sewer. Trust me. Does anybody else have any questions about the budget? I have one. Okay. The uh, town administrators have been chomping at the bit. Is it okay if I release it to them? We're going to vote yeah. on it. It's on a table. Yeah, it's a public right. document. We're going to vote table. on a tentative operating budget tonight, aren't we? Uh, uh, no, there, uh, there's no vote scheduled. No. Uh, okay. it, it's I thought we had to have it done. Well, they didn't write the agenda no. that way. No. Yeah, I thought it we says there was no votes. We usually March take, uh, yeah, no, we usually take it, uh, the vote after the March public hearing. Yeah, yeah, that's... We no, is that the tentative one. or that's the final one? The agreement calls you to do it twice. Calls for you that's to do right. it twice. <coughs> so I believe February. I'm was pretty sure it does. I think you're right. I think it should. So we could vote it and just say it was an clerical error. That's all it was was a clerical error because we've done this for years. I'm going to I'm going to go back to last um, February's agenda because I have it here. And I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to claim for a minute that we adhered to the reason agreement last year either. I'm just t telling you what's in it. I'm pretty sure that's what's in it. No, I think you're right. I know we vote twice. No, we've never done it. Right. We always we no, always did the final before. after public comment. We always did that we after did fi final after public last comment. Last February, you did not vote in tentative did budget. We, did we have an extra meeting last year? In February, twenty-eighth. Wow. Right at the end of it. Remember like a steel trap. After meeting? To give you guys some more time. Oh, please don't talk about two weeks ago. No, you're right, we did. I thought it was last yep. year. Wow. 
because we were up in the science room or something. I, I, I don't think it's ever been until March to, to take the first vote on the budget. It's always been done in February. It used to be done before that, but I think we, a couple of years ago we kicked, we moved it back in the regional agreement. It was earlier than that before. You guys are slow. I believe there's a fun, there's an actual date that we have to take it by, isn't there? The final one. I'm going to go to the January. Like so I can just tell you, it has to have a two-thirds vote. Last year, all you did was vote a, a final in, in, in March. No, I think it was right. Wow, I just remember having an extra meeting. And, then, and, and you could be right, and I don't have the agenda in my computer. So why don't we just so why don't we make a motion, and then that way we can release it to the towns. So moved. Second. So are we okay with this? <coughs> challenge we just gonna see was a typographic well it was does anybody else have any questions about it for tentative budget voting all no. of well, don't, don't we have to don't we have to do three numbers don't yeah, we, three, it used to be three it's two because there's no debt okay you operating in transportation Correct. two different ones yeah, two different numbers. so you would be voting tonight um, you would need to um, make a motion to tentatively adopt an operating budget. Of ten million seven sixty five three seventy eight and a transportation budget of two eighty three zero seventy six for a total budget of eleven million forty eight thousand four fifty four. So moved. I'll second that motion. Do we need two votes or just one on that? Sounds like one. You can vote them once. You can vote. We'll do it all twice. one. All in favor? So Phil, Phil made the motion and Phil. Phil Mayor Phoebe. Phil Mayor Phoebe. Because I have Bob Pye and I have Bob Becker. Well, everybody's making the motion. Well, after Patty wrote, the budget was voted last year on March 22nd. That's what I said. But no one believes me. For the last time, that's after the public hearing. Yeah. Did we only do it once? We only did one yeah. because yeah. Patty wrote the budget. Yeah. 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 Y
wine here takes time. Yeah. You got the regional agreement in that little box here? No, I don't. So yeah. did we have voted a tentative number. Yeah. Actually, uh, we might have it because I think we got sent it not we that did. long ago. We did get it because I have it in mine at home. We sent Linda sent us copies of the regional agreement a couple of months ago. Lynn sent it to us. Yes. Hold on. Find it. The regional agreement. See somebody, what, it required, what it requires of us. It would be nice if we did it right. Town office was asking for it as well. Skip on it. Lynn sent it to us. And I can send it again tonight. Okay. Um, eleven seven seventeen. Regional agreement. Are we looking for a date line? You said eleven seventeen? Yeah. Eleven seven. Eleven seven, sorry. Seven. Oh, okay. sorry. I got it here. We're looking for a date. What does it say? Just back oh, to what it said. What's it say? I just got to go through it now. Planning board. You need a younger set of eyes to help you there, Bob? Yes, I do. Maybe 26, maybe. Sixth grade uptime that day, Darius? Yeah. I don't think you should go to the FinCons. Regina never went to the FinCons. FinCons should come here. Yeah, but they never oh, do. Regina did. That shows their level of interest. Can I ask a question? Are we just waiting now at this yeah. point for the original? Somebody proposal? to find the dates. The dates of what? When things are due. The time, the budget, the, time. the timelines in the original agreement. Okay. What it requires of us. No, it's, it's not a, it's not a time like that. This is Roman, 1956. I was one of those kids that was coming in. While someone's looking, can we go on with other business here? Why don't we? Okay. Let's go to new business, school resource officer contract. Yep. So last year, if you remember, I believe it was in February, we were, um, again, looking at pictures of the building. Um, we were down in the multi-purpose room. I don't know what was going on in here. But we also, at that evening, voted on the <coughs> memorandum of understanding for our school resource officer. And we were, um, the vote came in that they would uh, vote for it for one year. So right now we have a one year um, agreement to have uh, Brian Ravish as our school resource officer. His salary of 15700 is in the budget we just presented. We have, we did put that back in the budget. My understanding from reading this is that we don't necessarily need to develop a new memorandum of understanding. Um, it's, it will remain in force and, and effective to amend it or rescinded by the parties. Bringing it to you is, the reason why we're bringing it to you tonight is because when we voted last year, I remember the, uh, the statement being, well, let's, let's vote it for this year and then see about next year. So the question is, do you want to continue with this um, memorandum of understanding for the school resource officer? Or do you want to uh, have a discussion and 
change here? I move to terminate the employment of the school resource, resource officer. He's useless. Why? This is the feedback I get from everybody. Can't have a discussion without a second. So Phil's looking for a second. If Let's be more specific. The motion is to take it off of our budget. He's welcome to stay here. Okay. Not my tax dollars. So to re remove uh, SRO's uh, salary. From the budget. From the, from the, <coughs> the, let's from say the funding, that salary. Oh, that's right, funding. We're not going to be able to talk about this and ask Darius if it's working unless right. somebody yes. seconds the motion. Yeah. I will second it for those purposes only. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Darius, how's things working out? Very well. Um, Sorry, I would recommend that we continue the, if we're not making other cuts within the budget, that we, are, we continue the resource officer because um, I think year one was a learning year for him. I think year two was this past year. And um, I think he's doing what a resource officer does. He has a relationship with students. He's doing a lot of them push into classrooms, health classes, the forensics class. He does a drug drivers thing as well. He's also a resource to what's going on in the community, what happens over the weekends. Um, kids are starting to go to him um, as for advice on issues going on. Um, so I think you know he is a he is a resource. You want to fill us in what? Well, you may you may know or don't know or. Um, I, you know, I just, uh, I would defer to his opinion. He knows more about it than I do. Um, but I, guess I haven't heard anything positive other than that. So that's good. Do you want to amend your motion? Well, um, I would just like to note that the way that this was presented to us was that it last year was a one-time thing. The Deerfield Academy was paying for this gentleman. And that Eaglebrook was supposed to. They pay half of it not. And that, that there was a thing that Eagle Brook had not been contacted, that uh, Bement had, uh, that he, he's supposed to work at all these places, and Eagle Brook is on his route, and Bement is on his route, and they refused to contribute. And uh, we were told that, I was told when I talked to him after a meeting, that he was going to knock on their doors and get them to contribute. I'd like, you know, I, do we know? Do we so, know? The, the result is that we are actually subsidizing police protection for Eagle Brook and for the men. Seriously, that's wrong. Only if he's going there and they're not contributing. So, he, are they not contributing and he's not going? We don't There's know. a big difference between those two things. How much time is he here? He is here at the start of school, let's say four of the five days of the week. So. And then, so he does the first hour plus of the school day here. I believe then goes over to Deerfield Elementary with their drop off. You know, it's the most. To me, I think it's an officer needs to be in the. If you have to be each building, is the opening of the school day because that's when all the doors are open, that right. kind of stuff. But if you're doing the safety level there, and that's when issues are going to happen from the night before, um, and any driving issues and that kind of stuff. So, from my understanding, he starts the day here, he goes over to Deerfield Elementary, continues there. He probably has a lot more business with us than he has with Deerfield Elementary, so he comes back to us um, on those other days, and then. then Midday is when he goes to, um, I believe it was the DA. I don't know about what Eagle Brook did. Um, but that wouldn't, that doesn't affect our share of the MOU, whether he goes to Eagle Brook and Bement or not. It's the same amount of money for us. That's the way I understood the like memorandum of understanding. Are we getting our 15000 worth? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I can, you know. If I can go out, I can go back and ask him to give me a charting of hours. I haven't been overseeing it that way. It, you know, it's been, um, you know, his supervisor is the chief of police, not me. Um, he does, we do have a very good working yeah. relationship, though, in the sense of that we're not stepping on each other's toes. He's respectful of, you know, there's a lot of times where people are worried about officers in the school, fringing on students' rights, step overstepping the bounds. Like, principal brings in as a student who, may or may not have drugs. Does the officer step in and arrest him? No, he stays out of the room. It's a school matter until the school personnel asks him to step in. He's very respectful of those kind of, and understand those boundaries. 
and, and wants those boundaries. He believes that, you know, kids make mistakes. He's not about, you know, lighting them up and throwing them in the back seat of the car and that kind of stuff. When students, you know, had had problems with court, this, we had real life issues that happened in our bubble. You don't just hear about it because they do a nice job of keeping it at the student level. The student had to be arrested, it's done quietly. You know, those kind of things are, um, you know, he's done, he's been a very, He's done a very good job at that. And I know that some resource officers in Western Mass have had other reputations where they walk, they walk with a big stick and they demand respect. You know, he's not that way. He wants to be part of the community. He's got a family in the building. He's got those kind of connections. So he's he's what we want in a resource officer. So if you if you want follow up on hours here and hours there, I can ask him to throw together a little thing so that you feel comfortable with those numbers. Uh, I'm sure he would not happy to show where his time is being spent. And maybe we should, you know, have no problem pulling them accountable for that. I have not been on that up to this point, but if that's what you want me to do, I think that might be a reasonable. If people want to feel sleep better at night about how the money's going, we can find out where is his hours, what is he doing, those kind of things. Um, I know that right now he's he's working with Scott Dredge to do a full um, uh, the dangers of of uh, cell phones and in elementary schools, and they're about to go down to the elementary school to give a training to parents because there's been an uptick in um, very bad behavior online um, with students. Um, Snapchat and that kind of stuff, really crossing those things, that you, those, those stories you only read about. Um, it's, it's, you know, so he's doing those kind of videos, educational programs. So I can kind of have him chart out you know, what he's been doing those goals if you want to report on that. Hold him accountable. I don't, I don't think we should micromanage him because he, he you know, Darius has a relation, with Scott has a relation with, and the police chief has a relationship with him. So I mean, he can't have too many bosses. And we're, and he's, paying, we're not as only people are paying him, other people are paying him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Whether it's the town of Deerfield and DA, and it's up to you know somebody else, hey, is he spending our time at, at Eagle Brook or Manette or whatever. Well, but that's, you know, I have no problem getting a basic schedule from him and a basic list of you know things he's been working on this year. Can I be able to share that in my principal's report at the next meeting. If I, I believe that his schedule should be confidential to you because we, the public, should not know where he is at all times. Because I believe that's a safety issue. If he is here in the morning or if he's there first thing in the morning, that's between you. As long as you can come back to us and say, you know what, he's doing his job and this, I would keep all that other stuff out of our concern and anybody else's concern because, again, hey, public, this is being taken. And I think that that needs, that's one of the things that resource officers have on their side is that that confidentiality between the school and themselves where they can show up different places at different times. So what he does is admit. Okay, what he does not here, it's we don't none care. of our business. If they're if the three of them are holding up there, somehow or other, holding up there into the bargain, paying the part of his salary, and we're paying our part. Right. That's not our business. But we so want to know if they're paying their part. No, we don't. I don't care. As long as he's here, the percent that he's here, we're fine. Yeah. yeah. You can't work twenty nine hours. We're not on the hook for all of it if they don't pay it. Right. Because we we're not on the hook for any more than we ever were. Right. I, I agree. So, but I cut your answer. Patty's got to. Well, we have to vote. Let's finish this first. No, you don't have to vote. No. We have to vote. Just withdraw your motion. Yeah. Withdraw your motion. Do I have to you withdraw your second? second? Yes, you do. No. <laughs> do I? So the, the I don't withdraw my second. Do we keep talking about it forever? No, the, the, the one other question I had, though, the memorandum, um, it has been a problem in the past about who is the uh, line authority to speak with the media. And um, the memorandum of understanding should reflect the fact that any school issue uh, should be the superintendent speaking with the media or the superintendent's designate. And in the past, we have had a problem with um, that not being adhered to. When the with the bomb issue, with, with the bomb scare thing, what, five years ago, whatever, when. Uh, when a lot of people felt that the Deerfield Police Chief issued alarmist public uh, media statements before they could get a hold of the superintendent, and and again when the thing a couple years ago with the little with the kid with the video game like toy gun in the parking lot or whatever, the Deerfield Police Chief Chief issued 
uh, media statement and uh, gave an interview before our superintendent did. And again, it was not, it, it's much better. And, and it's their own policies as well that, that the super, and so, you know, it should, it should be in writing that the police department knows that uh, not to step on the toes that, to, to that yeah. all media requests, all media discussions go through the superintendent when they involve the school. That's, period. that's I don't know if we can protocol. do that. Yeah, that, 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 is, protocol. that is protocol. But I don't know if we can legally bind them no. to that. I don't think we can. I, I, don't, I, don't, think I don't think so either. Mass General Law, I don't think the, the law enforcement is, is charged to proceed, of, of, to proceed as, as they would. Yeah. I think that's built from a cooperation Situation. The matters of public safety belong to the police. Was that concerned? Was that what negative things came from that? People going on Facebook and being upset? He shouldn't. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think that the police should, should be, be on TV saying this, this person will be suspended for this many days. No, no, no. 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 That's her job. Right. That there. That. What? That there was an incident. That there was yes. fact. That's that, their job. That there was factual inaccuracies in both of the statements that the super that the police chief made. And that, that could have been. That would not recorded. have been the case if the superintendent had made them. No, I don't remember what you're talking about. This being an impact on the school. So whether or not they had some other <clears throat> website that was different than what we sent out, I don't remember it being a problem in the school. I think it may just help. I mean, I have a pretty good relationship with Chief Mature. I mean, work together on most things and so some things are criminal in nature that happen and they answer the question regarding the criminal investigation it's not going to go back to the superintendent to say how is the criminal investigation going for blank right now it doesn't it's not it's not her job to do that part if we had a threat in the school we had to do an evacuation or something of that sort you know if you got with any of those things there's going to be a press release by the superintendent and then there's going to be the police are going to have what they you know sometimes the press is going to go to them for more you know, they have the right to do whatever they say, whatever they're doing. So, so we're going to, we're going to, we have a new draft. Do I, I don't, do I have to put that in the notes? Yeah, we have to record the motion being made, and but then they also have to refer right. to the fact that he withdrew it. So then we it. have to vote uh, to renew. Okay. Now we need to vote for renewing this motion. The, the thing about this is, this is what I would I I would advise us to do. This memorandum of understanding will remain in full force until this either party decides to rescind it. So, if we make a motion to um, accept or continue this memorandum of understanding until we decide to rescind it, then it wouldn't come up every year. It would just be a matter of regular business. Last year, it was voted on for one year, so we bring it back this year. But I would advise us to just make the motion to um, accept the memorandum of understanding, as it stated, uh, until we, as a school committee, decide to amend or rescind it. I'd like to make a motion to continue this memorandum of understanding until we decide to rescind it. Second. Question. Is that a line? Does that show up as a line? A line. Yeah. Okay, so we would be, it would be visible. So we could then, at some point, if we didn't, that, that could be when it came up. Anybody else have anything on this? That's fine. All in favor? Be opposed. Opposed. Oh. Okay, Bob. Oh, okay. Forty-five days. Backing up. Forty-five days, not later than fixed. March thirty-first. Uh, depending upon forty-five days from the first town meeting, which is April twenty-fourth. Okay. But at the latest, March thirty-first. But you don't have to do it any time before February. We don't need two votes. I'll read you the whole thing out if you want. No, sorry. No, I, have to. I believe it. If the first meeting is April 24th, 45, 45 days before. 45 days, we're glad we're Okay, so we may have a problem. We might have a problem because 45 days would be March 10th, 
uh, we'd have to vote by March 10th would be the 45th day, and our meeting isn't until the 13th. We just did it. We just voted. We just it's done. tentative. So. We're we're back. There's no such thing. It doesn't ask you for a thing. It doesn't tell you what kind of vote you have to have, does it? What did you record as a vote? Motion uh, to tentatively adopt an operating budget of 10 million and thus plus a transportation budget of 283,000 for a total budget of 11 so million plus. We, all right, so we need a motion to amend th that motion that it, to adopt the budget. Why don't we just oh, have the well, well, you well, normally don't, have don't the do that until after your earlier. public hearing. I was going to say, other years we've had that discussion. You can't vote a final budget what's before the, your yeah. public hearing. What's the point of having a public hearing if we've already voted it? But you're, three days so you're not supposed to vote it before your public hearing. So what, what Patty's saying is to comply with the 45 days, we have to do it by March the 10th? Correct. Okay. And so that we don't. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the remember the violation of the agreement. <laughs> Again. Yeah, I know. Just technically. It's not like we're we, we here. What, we could move the meeting to March 6th. We can do that. First Tuesday of the month. And then we can have the public hearing that night also and then vote it. That's a good idea, Patty. Okay. Every now and then I can also. Is everybody good for March 6th? That's the yeah. blind squirrel thing. Blind squirrel. Yes. I, I, I would like to be in compliance as close as we can be if possible with We'll just have to remember Even that. Even though we disagree with We it. have to remember that in the future. To count yeah. backwards. <laughs> well, probably, yeah. <laughs> Basically. So we need a motion to change the March 13th meeting to March 6th. You're making that motion? I, I believe I just did. I will second that motion. And I know if anybody has problems, you know, but this is trying to be in compliance, so hopefully everybody can make it. So public meeting starts at 6, and, our and then our meeting starts our meeting immediately after. after. Unless you okay. want to start at 5. I did used to, but that didn't work out. No, I don't I don't think you'll get the town fathers along the crowd. No, I think 6 is a good time, and then we just start up immediately following. We're not doing that anyway, but public all in favor on changing yes. the date to the 6th of March, all in favor? And then when the minutes can be, make a little note of the minutes, make sure it's like, a, like highlighted in different color or something. Because sure. people, well, two people aren't here tonight, and all this always thinks about the second Tuesday, so. School committee meeting, March 13th, Tuesday, March 13th. So maybe somebody should send them an email tomorrow, but they know their calendars, note their calendars. The budget that the, the original agreement says it has to be a two-thirds vote. Uh, somewhere I remember it in used there. to be there. I, it's what a happened? long agreement. This is all. We're all in favor, so it doesn't have to worry about two-thirds. Yeah, but it's yeah. Good. if you get the wrong people missing, it does here. Trouble. So because it doesn't add up the way the operating budget shall be adopted by an affirmative vote of at least two-thirds of the membership of the full committee prior to February 28th. Well. All right, so I've got my email ready to go. Can I hit send? Why the the uh, two thirds of the weighted vote? Or two thirds of the to be a eleven. Oh, in March. Two thirds of the, the weighted so vote. That. Two thirds. Can a tentative yeah, vote? but you just voted. Everybody voted yes. So isn't that three thirds? It, it, yeah, three it has threes? to be by forty-five days before the first town meeting, right. or March thirty-first, whichever right. comes first. But does does a vote for a tentative fill that obligation? Two thirds of those present are voting. Say two -thirds about of I know. It doesn't there say you go. Final. Somebody made of that up. Membership <laughs> of the full committee. It says you will adopt an annual. Did you hear what you, he just read you? Two thirds of the membership of the full committee shall constitute a quorum of the adoption of the operating budget, and said budget shall be adopted by the affirmative vote of at least two thirds of the membership of the full committee prior to February 28th each year. The treasurer of the committee shall certify to the treasurer of each member of towns its share of such budget and its share of any installment principal and interest to become due in the ensuing year on any bond. Uh, two-thirds of the president voting. But that was amended in committee. April of yeah. 97. Yeah. 
So it's not two thirds of those there. It's two thirds of the whole, of the whole committee. committee. Not two thirds of those president. So voted. do we have two thirds of the whole what did you say committee? About um, <coughs> we do tonight. So yeah. So we're good. <laughs> because percentage wise, Judy is food. just on this, and Davian's just on this. So neither one of them is a one. So is that one we used to do too? So if they were a one, I might be one. Okay, we're good. So we used to do two votes one day. So I'm going to do one for the offering. It used to be three votes. I can't miss it. This is a three vote. 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 Three vote
So it looks like we're pretty solid until 2027. So this is all new. This is, we were, all the projections we had seen before this were straight down. This is saying in 10 years, yeah. there's, we're going to be 40 students less than right now. They have these really incredible formulas. I took a class with um, Don Kennedy when I was uh, getting my superintendent certification. He, he's the one that developed these. It's a very complex formula where they do the projections. But they do look at birth rates. And you can see where it could have looked pretty dismal because up until 2012, there was a drop. There was you know, quite a drop, actually. Um, from a high of 1,500 to now close to 1,200. But now we're staying in the 1,100s, if, according to this. Life may throw something different at us, but it looks like between today and 2027, we'll lose about 40 kids. The enrollment projections we have in the feasibility study that we rebuilt papers. this place, the enrollment projections like we, were, we're going off the charts. We're going to have 700 plus worried. kids in this building yeah. before we get it built. Yeah, we were worried we wouldn't have a big enough building. And then the next time, the same outfit that's in it is right now. Maybe their computer graphics are there. Yeah, it's essentially for your reading budget. But these figures don't reflect any of the school choice kids. These are just homegrown children, yeah. pre K through 12. We have birth rates. These are kids who haven't even been thought of yet. Yeah. Uh, by anyone else. Our grandchildren. Great. Great, great. So, well, about, in your case. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, just this one page, this page, I'd like to see you have a stack of these on the table at every town meeting because, uh, because this is one of the big things, you know, you need to cut your budget because your enrollment's going to fall off a cliff. So yeah. this is... It doesn't... Let's it, not do that right? then. Exactly. It doesn't, exactly. it doesn't look like that, does it? And um, since we've been stable since 2012, we're at 2017, if you just look at this, this little... This is where 2012 and this is 2017 we've been stable. But we were projected to go up at one point. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So this is a bunch of numbers. Some and of our, I guess, yeah. Some that's of all our schools is. might have Here gone down, but our Sunderland has come up. Birds. <laughs> so, and we're, we're a whole group for four different schools. Well, things like, you know, the Red Sox win the World Series for the first time. It changes the whole dynamic. That's right. Yeah. There's lots of important. people celebrating. That's right. So, you know, you know. And you know if it's an exceptionally cool winter. Hey, Bob, in 10 years, bring that paper back, okay? Five we'll take a look at it. Hey, 40 years ago, right, you had the big blizzard. And then we changed the October 1 enrollment. Or, or I think it was October 1, we moved it to September because of influx of number of kids that were coming. Yeah. That was a cold winter. Yeah, the winter of 78. Hey, Next. That was a lot of snow that day where I was. We're losing the area. All I can tell you is uh, there were an awful lot of kids. Okay, two, 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 2017 annual report. So this is the annual report that it goes to the towns and are put in the towns, um, their their town annual report. And Frontier Regionals piece, you can see uh, all the information that's going in there. One thing that I'm especially proud of is when I have met, I've met uh, quite a bit with the town administrators of the four towns, and they have asked us to provide a little bit more information about the schools, more in the narrative, more information for stakeholders, taxpayers, uh, folks that aren't as familiar with the school as we are, to learn about uh, the school, to read about. So um, the whole administrative team got together and added parts to each of these narratives. And that would include the director of technology, the director of special ed, uh, the early elementary coordinator, the uh, secondary education director, and the elementary education director. And I think that's it. But they all got together and did their own pieces, and then we compiled it into a great report. So this is uh, the report, it says superintendent's report, but it's really written by all the, all the players in the school. And uh, you can see where it's talking about Chromebook Initiative, Capstone Program, our AP, uh, different ways to attain AP status, 
PD, early release programs, extracurricular, special education, um, our staff, people coming and going, uh, definitely our special thanks to all of you and the, the staff, the dedicated staff and faculty that make Frontier Regional the school it is, which is a pretty uh, excellent learning organization. Then you'll see Conway's uh, numbers and then Conway Grammar School. Again, Kristen Gordon uh, spearheaded this, but all of the other directors to the piece, the technology, the um, special education, out of school time program, preschool programs, and uh, definitely our curriculum coordinators uh, added a lot. And then again, you'll see Deerfield. Same difference with Deerfield. They presented a wonderful, uh, a uh, wonderful uh, narrative on all the initiatives going on there and all the great ways that they communicate with their communities. And again, preschool, technology, special ed. And likewise for Sunderland. Sunderland has all that information. Plus they've written about their school family partnerships, their community outreach. Uh, again, their highly successful preschool program and um, technology, PD, and then their curricula, uh, curriculum initiatives. Uh, and likewise with Waitley at the end of the report, and they've done a great job too with their narratives. So I'm very pleased that each of our schools have uh, come together with our directors as a unit and compiled these great reports for the the, the uh, taxpayer that doesn't have children in the school that's not that informed, they, they would enjoy reading about what we're doing here, our arts and our programs. So that is for you to read and enjoy yourself. Thank you. The collaborative Bob? Yeah, um, we had a meeting. Uh, there's going to be a subcommittee on buildings and acquisition of property on uh, Thursday morning at 9 30. An executive session to look at addition, an additional piece of property. And one of you, and uh, you all were sent the uh, executive director's monthly report or yep. report. Uh, it's very long. And kind of left a whole bunch of information for Lynn to disseminate to the proper people here at the school relative to some of the programs that the collaborative is doing. And, uh, you know, I figured that this stuff is just going to go on a pile at home, so I brought it in so she could disseminate it to people that could actually use it and relate to it. So hopefully it, it got the people so that they can see it. And they put out a beautiful presentation on it. Cigarettes and tobacco and everything else. Get them to buy the blue school. They'll love it. Get them to buy the no, blue school. No, that's going to be a pot facility. That's what I said. That's going to be a pot facility. Let them move to Italy. Oh, going to be a pot farm on the corner. <laughs> yeah, it's all selling out. Actually, Billy, the uh, stuff they passed. You remember when Consolidated had the backwood cigars? Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the packages they passed out, saying how that was so bad. And I had to tell them that my father tried those out when they were first made. <laughs> Lost his chance. Next. <laughs> I had a question. Oh. <laughs> okay. About the collaborative? No, about the principal's report. Oh, you're going to have to wait. Oh, hopefully he'll be back. back. Yeah, he's got all stuff in So um, the only thing I have classes. for the superintendent's report is that Patty and I will be working next week when the students are gone. And these four nights, we're putting out four budgets this week. This is our second. Tomorrow night, of course, we have Deerfield, and then we have Conway. <laughs> Once things settle down next Tuesday, Patty and I will be working on putting the RFP out for the Blue School, and that is uh, going to go out um, concurrently with uh, so the way we have Mr. We have Brian's piece, and what we've decided to do is uh, put the advertisements in together 
so that we know that they end up together. So we'll pay for that, and then we'll bill the town of Waitley for their share of the ad. But we're going to place both ads and, and request that they show up side by side in the advertisement section. Um, so uh, that'll be happening uh, next week on the 20th. Because Waitley has done their piece already? Yeah. yeah. So we're wait they're waiting on us? Yeah. And the only reason we delayed it a little bit because of budget season. Yeah. That's that's the only reason we delayed it, which was, yeah, too much. So it's a two. Am I recording? Your last, sir. Yes. Yes, for us. All right. Um, you can fire through the, I'm not going to read them all out to you, but basically we've entered the transition to the new season, the new year, um, second semester. Also, you know, students are signing up for courses. We're also starting the transition for, we had eighth grade parent night last week, um, which basically high school parent night, I'm going to put it that way, I'm talking about what to expect in high school. Um, we did our AP annual information night where the teachers presented their AP courses to parents. We had a good, very good turnout for that, about 50 plus parents, um, talking about the different offerings of the um, upper level courses. Um, I've also had the first of my two coffee houses um, last week. Um, I'll be honest, the tents was not great. We had about a dozen or so families there. I think last year we had about 20 something people there. So it was down a little bit. You know, we had a snow day in the middle of that week, so that may have caused people's schedules to get thrown off. Um, when we come back from break, we'll have our first, um, well, the evening parent information night on that Tuesday, and then have another coffee in March for parents to learn more about the school. Um, our band went out today to the elementary schools, performing in all four elementary schools to promote. Um, along with the performance promoting uh, participation in music. Uh, we also had uh, two presenters from the Collaborative today working with our social justice goals. Uh, they did a presentation with the middle school students um, looking at um, stereotypes around race, gender, class, sexual orientation, religion, immigration status, et cetera. Um, and they did a lot of different activities and there's gonna be a follow-up to that in the spring. In the high school, we did a smaller groups. Um, they signed up to be a part of um, having dialogue, about dialogue around um, social justice and how people can find their inner voice on those things. And just FYI, these are things that you approved long ago, but the New Zealand trip leaves on Friday, um, and the Washington DC trip leaves the mo Monday after break. So that was the speed read-through of all of that. Thank you, any questions for Gary? Uh, on number five, your coffee things, how do you run that? Is it, what time does it, maybe I missed that, but what time does it start, what do you serve? So we do, we still do the the traditional in the evening, come, get a tour of the school. Right. We kind of talk, we talk about and such for about an hour and a half. And how so many this, people come that to that? That particular evening, we probably get, parents will get between around 60. Okay. So, I mean, you have to kind of, you, you balance it. When I look at those numbers, I'm like, if you already have a sibling in the school, many of them are not coming. Right. So, like, get some fluxes year to year. Um, and then whether or not two people come for one kid or just one person comes, so that kind of fluctuates those numbers as well. So, um, starting last year, the year before, I started doing coffees in the morning. So, kid, people can come during the school day. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we talk a little they bit for a while, then we do tours of the classes in session. Mm -hmm. And I tell the parent, it, they, they seem to enjoy, those who have the time to be able to do that, it's a sacrifice in the morning, um, really enjoy it because they can see, look at the actual class sizes, look at what the kids are doing, look at the, you know, the kind of fears that they're meeting, these big scary hallways, and they're seeing transition in the class, and they're like, I didn't see it this way, I didn't imagine it this way, so it really answers all those questions, and I tell, I try to do a lot of word of mouth stuff that says, if you know anybody who is considering other placement, wants to learn more, they really need to come to these coffee ones, because it's really an intimate, we break up and there's more, you know, there's several, myself and Sarah's doing it, and Shelly Allen, the director of guidance, does it. So there's you know, three people who really know all the ins and outs, walking with a, you know, a dozen or so parents, mm -hmm. um, you know, that kind of thing. So that's the two pushes, or three pushes to do. So and so I mail that out, physical mail it. I've when? emailed it out twice now because we had a- But when do you do that? So I mail out the full agenda of all the different things that are happening, and that went out in, when we came back, I believe, in January. So it kind of said, these are the same the date, these are the date, and then I do an email reminder blast to all the parents, and they send the note to the principals to put in their, their correspondence with home. So my so. only question would be, should the save the date go out earlier? So by January, is my schedule already as a parent full, where it wouldn't be in if you're, September with all the other paperwork coming home? 
save the date? I mean, okay. I, I, I would say that, but I would say that, but the save the date, it's the last week in February and I sent it out in January. You know, I said, oh, when we came back in January, so you had two months in advance notice for a school night. And there's three different options of getting the information through the two copies. So well, I agree in one thing, it's my other fear is that you do it too early. I guess I could, say, they forget. I could say at the beginning of the year, you know. That, Just this is coming. Right. And then, so I try to I send the flyer I sent home as a PDF attached to all my emails, reminding them so they can yeah. see all the data coming forward. Do people have to call and make an appointment? Um, I ask people to RSVP by email or call Michelle or the just to let us know that we have a so we general idea of numbers coming. Okay. For, the, for the coffee, for the evening. No, oh, yeah. It's open. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Would you like to go to another one sometime? Oh, I went to it. I I didn't go to the coffee. I went. I was one of the parents. Oh, I would recommend it. Nine, anybody hasn't, you know, well, anybody ever wants an intimate tour with other parents and stuff, the coffee. Ten years great. ago? Sadly, it's been yeah, school. Oh, I should like to see what it was all about. I could do that if they let me out of school. Knowing the daytime was really good. Yeah, you get a and it, the difference is the building, like a dark, closed building, yeah. versus it's building alive and energetic. Does anybody else have anything else they want to share? Oh my God, that's right. I'm sorry. I saw that. Hey. He's trying. <laughs> He's trying. I saw you packing that stuff up. I got a surprise for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, you want me to read it? You want to just copy it? We entered that executive session pursuant to MGL C 30A section 21A3 to discuss strategy strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the teachers association. An open meeting may have determined effect on the bargaining position. Of the public body and, and the chair is so declared. And do we have to do start? start? We're going to do one or yeah, you're going to do both? Do both. So do you don't want to come out and go back in? No, do both. We don't want to go out? Yeah. Do no. we want to go back We're going to go into yeah. executive <laughs> session once. To enter into executive session pursuit of MGL section 3C 38 section 21A3 to discuss strategies respect to litigation, open meeting may have a determined effect on the litigation position of the public body and the chair is so declares. There's a motion to go into executive session. Second. Who do we want to stay? Roll call. Roll call, please. Yeah, roll call. Who do we, we need to want record to stay? in the minutes who's going to who we need, who to, need to stay. Like, do you need Darius? Yes. And myself. And Patty. And Patty. Okay. I know. Do we need the union? Second. Do we want the union? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, she's already aware. I know she wants the union. I've already eyeballed it. <laughs> we don't need the union. We're going to. Okay. We're going to do a roll call. We're going to call Keith. Yes. 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 Sure. Yes. Cindy. Yes. Bob. Yes. Yes. Move to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.